right so in the last section we have created the input areas now users can input their commit url and then select the category select the parameters and click on run button so what are we going to show in there so we're going to get the all the elements in this category and from those elements we're going to filter only the selected parameters and then we need to show these parameters in a table format so first i want to get all the elements inside the selected category let's do that as the first step so i'm going to create a new variable called category elements right and what are we going to do so we already have the commit data stored in the commit data variable so i'm going to reference to that commit data and from there i want to get the elements in the selected category and selected category is stored in this variable let's reference that as well so all the elements will be stored in this variable now let me type in that one more time click on Control s and let's see what that looks like so as you can see i have 91 base object listed okay so in the next step we need to loop through each of these elements and get the corresponding parameter value from it but we have a problem because right now we are listing our parameters by their names so we're not listing the actual you know the room underscore area or room underscore level instead we are listing the name of them so we need to somehow get the parameters from their names so once we do that we can actually get their value as well how do we do that let's create another function and i will say get parameter by name right so this one will accept three inputs the first one is elements because we are going to loop through each element in the selected category and then we are going to input the parameter name maybe like level name area whatever so i will say parameter name and then finally we are going to return a dictionary so i will say dict right so first let's loop through each parameters so i'll say for parameter in parameters and i'm going to create a new variable called key and this key will equal to the name of the parameter so how do we get access to the name of the parameter we say first element because we're going to loop through each element and then from element like this one get access to its parameters parameters and then we're going to type in the actual parameter name like room area and it's equals to parameter variable parameter and we're going to get its name just like so and if this key equals to the parameter name like maybe level name or area parameter underscore name and then we're going to return a dictionary dictionary we have referenced that here and its key will be the key variable and its value will equal to just like here element that parameters that parameter name but instead of name we are going to return its value like for area we're going to return this value or for level name we're going to return this guy so this way once you input the parameters name like level name area you can actually return its value using this function and we are going to return dictionary so this is our function let me copy this and paste that into here so this one will get parameter value by parameter name and this one gets parameters names and let me delete it from here 
All right, so we have created the last function as well. Now is the exciting part. We are going to show our data to the users. So if you may remember, we have created a container for the data. Let's reference that in our code as well. So I'll say with data, and then whatever I input will be contained in that container. And let's create a subheader. So I'll say st dot subheader, and this subheader will be data. I'm gonna save this and see what that looks like. Awesome. Okay, so let's create a new variable called result data, and this will be an empty list. So I'm gonna append every data into this list, and then I'm gonna convert this into a data frame and show it to the user. So we have our elements stored in the category element, and we have our parameters stored here, but we didn't actually specify a variable for that. Let's do that. I'm gonna say selected parameters. So selected, so all the, these parameters will be stored in this variable. All right, so let's loop through each element. So I'll say for element in category element. So we are looping through each element, right? like so, so we get access to the first one, second one, third one. Let's go with the first one. And then I'm gonna create the dictionary because now I'm going to use the function we just created. And I will loop through each of the selected parameters. So I can say for s param in selected parameters so we are looping through each of these parameters and then I will use the function to get the value of that parameter I will say get parameter by name and it accepts three inputs the first one is element our element is right here so I will say element and then the next one is the parameter name the parameter name is right here as param so I will say s underscore param and the last one is dictionary and our dictionary is right here so dictionary awesome and in return we are going to append this dictionary into the result data so I will say result underscore data dot append dictionary so let's see what this looks like. I'm gonna click on Control S again, just to save, and I'm gonna type in result data. And here it is. Each element with their selected parameter names and their corresponding values. All right, so let's create a data frame from this list. I will name this variable as result underscore data frame and we are going to use the pandas library we have imported in the beginning. I will say pd dot data frame dot from dictionary and we are going to use result underscore data. I'm going to save again and let's type in result data frame just to see it. And here it is. All right, so instead of typing in like this, I will say st dot data frame and result underscore data frame, just the sake of clarity. So now the first part is out of the way. We have created our data frame and we can you know see our table in this beautiful format. Let's see actually level, name, number, area, and maybe like floor finish. I'm gonna click on run one more time just to see that it works. Awesome. So the next step will be creating the download button. But if you remember, we're gonna download a CSV file. So first let's convert our data frame into a CSV. So I will create another variable and name it as result underscore CSV. Again, we are going to use the pandas for that. So I will reference to the data frame first, result.dataframe and then to CSV function, awesome. And let's encode that as a UTF-8. 
Okay, so our CSV file is now stored in the result CSV. We can actually create the download button. And there's actually a special function for that in Streamlit. I'll type in st.download button. And it expects a couple things. The first one is the label. And the label will be download CSV, right? Let me add a emoji like so. And then it expects the data. Data is equal to result CSV. So I'll say result underscore CSV. What else? So we need the file name. And I'm going to uh, make the file name as the commit ID. So I will create an F string. And I will input this as wrapper dot commit ID. So this will be the file name and it's going to end with dot csv so i'll say dot csv and finally i'm going to say mime equals to text dot csv let me save this and voila we have our download button as well so let's test our function so i'm going to refresh it so we have our default stuff here, but I see that data stuff is populated already. So what I can do now is I can connect this data showing up with the run button. So I can simply say, let me come back to here with data. And then I have this st.subheader result data. And then I can say if run underscore button is clicked and then do everything here. I'm gonna save it one more time. Source file changed, always rerun. Awesome. So now I can see the data, but it's not populating anything because first we need to click on the run button. Now is the exciting part. We are done with the coding. Let's test our app. So I'm gonna come back to speckle and let's use the second comment we made, which contains more than one category. And I'm gonna copy its URL. Let's go back to our app and let's paste that as the commit URL input. I'm gonna press enter. And the categories as well as the parameters are listed. For now, I'm interested in getting a room schedule out of it. So I'll click on rooms. Awesome, I have the parameters. Let's do level, name, number, and area for now. I'm gonna click on run. And here it is, all the rooms in my model. I can actually sort them by their name, like so, or by their number and view it here. And let's download a CSV. As you can see, comment name, I downloaded before, that's why you're seeing the number two here. Let's open that, awesome. I'm gonna close this for now and let's add the floor finish, maybe ceiling finish and wall finish as well. Let's click on run one more time. Awesome. And let's download CSV again. And voila, just like that, we have our schedule in a CSV file. You can now import that into, you know, Excel or whatever app you want to use. All right, so this was it. In this tutorial, we have covered pretty much everything related to Speckleify. We have learned about Stream Wrapper, which makes things a lot easier for us. And then we have used Speckle Client to interact with the Speckle server. We have received data and most importantly, we have received actual Revit data from Speckle server. And then we have created this beautiful looking data frame and the download CSV option. All right. So this was it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new in this video. If you have any questions or recommendation for a future tutorial, 
just let us know in the comment section below. If you have any feature requests, we have a community forum, speckle.community. Go there and ask us. We will definitely help you. Okay, so thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.